Hello, thanks for your interest in my poster. My name is Etienne and I'll be talking to you about predicting snoring abundance in humans to reveal their main abundance determinants. So snoreNAs uh, are small non-coding RNAs um, that uh, mostly guide ma uh, modifications on their uh, target RNA to which they bind. Um, there are basically two types of snoreNA, CD box snoreNAs and HAC box snoreNAs, which guide a different modification on their target RNA. They are uh, involved in a myriad of uh, functions such as ribosome biogenesis and uh, regulation of alternative splicing. In humans, SNORNAs are either encoded within introns of genes called the host gene or uh, within intergenic regions. And out of the two um, genomic contexts, a SNORNA can either be expressed or not expressed. So these two terms, I will refer to them as a SNORNA's abundance status. We recently characterized the expression of SNORNAs in several, several um, healthy human tissues. And interestingly, we found that um, only less than a third of all annotated SNORNAs are expressed in these tissues. I found here that um, the expressed SNORNAs uh, here are uh, mostly encoded within uh, host genes, either protein coding or non-coding host gene. And um, um, conversely, uh, not expressed SNORNAs are mostly encoded within intergenic regions. And the ratio of CD box to HAC box SNORNA um, doesn't really change uh, between the two abundance status. It is not really clear right now in the literature what are the main factors that determine whether a SNORNA is expressed or not expressed. It was only shown for a small subset of uh, intronic uh, CD box SNORNA that their distance to um, the branch point within their intron and also their uh, terminal stem length was uh, critical for um, their expression. However, we don't really know what are the main abundance determinants for HEC box SNORNAs and for all the other CD box SNORNAs not included in, in these two um, studies. So uh, we hypothesize that uh, several other uh, features might be important for um, regulating SNORNA as abundance, such as uh, the stability of the terminal stem, uh, the stability of the SNORNA structure, um, the conservation of uh, the sequence of the SNORNA, uh, etc. To answer whether uh, what are the main abundance determinants of SNORNAs, I use a machine learning approach um, where I will train several uh, machine learning uh, models to predict whether a SNORNA is expressed or not expressed. Um, I used um, several uh, features, input features, both uh, related to the SNORNA directly or um, uh, extrinsic features uh, such as the position of the SNORNA within its host gene or uh, host gene uh, characteristics. These input features were uh, fed to um, the models. Um, so the first step of um, this approach was to um, tune the uh, hyperparameters of these models, uh, which I did on a cross-validation set uh, com uh, comprised of 15% of all SNORNAs. Then I, with these best hyperparameters um, for each model, I um, trained them on a, a training set composed of 70% of all SNORNAs. And finally, I um, will uh, evaluate the performance of um, these uh, models and choose uh, the best performing uh, model to uh, the best classifier of abundance status. So this, um, out of, with this uh, best uh, model, I will try to um, better understand uh, how uh, it took its decision. So basically, I will get insights into a model, uh, the model interpretability. Um, using a uh, SHAP values, which I will explain later on, um, to get uh, better insights in SNORNA biology. So most machine learning models uh, are known as black box models. Uh, so we don't really know uh, how do they, do they take their decision of, uh, in my case, um, classify uh, whether a SNORNA is expressed or not expressed. Fortunately, a new method was developed called um, Shapley Additive Explanations, or SHAP, um, which help to uh, better understand um, the decisions taken by uh, the model. 
So it basically gives results like these, where we can see at the top uh, features uh, used by, uh, so the most important features used by um, the classifier to take its decision. So first, without uh, getting into uh, the, the predictions, I will give you just an overview of um, the distribution of the most uh, promising uh, predictive features. So we, here we have uh, the terminal stem stability, which seem to be uh, really important for uh, CD box snornays, but not for HEC box snornays. So we can see that for um, so snornay, CD box snornays with a highly stable uh, terminal stem seems to be uh, mostly expressed which is not the case for uh, not expressed snornies. The second most uh, interesting feature uh, seems to be the conservation of the sequence, um, uh, both for CD and HEC box snorney, where you can see that uh, most conserved snornies are also um, expressed. Finally, I'll give you a quick sneak peek at uh, preliminary results. So we can see here uh, the performance of um, the four models I trained um, uh, with these rock curves, and we can see that they are uh, all highly um, accurate and performant, uh, which is uh, very nice. And um, just to give you uh, one example here for uh, the gradient boosting classifier, we see here the um, its five most uh, predictive uh, feature or most important feature for its decision. We can see that the conservation seems to be um, the most uh, predictive feature, so uh, probably um, an important abundance determinants for snornies. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention and I'll be happy to take any question.